Hello there, friends and fiends. Let's see what the fuck Riley Dennis is on about this time. The other day, I was listening to this podcast because God forbid you'd read a book and one of the episodes talked about this concept that I had never heard of before. But now you're an expert on it and so you're doing a video about it, right? Right. And it explains so much. But just so you know, this video is not sponsored. Ooh, that's a subtle hint. I just really enjoy this podcast. I wish I was getting paid to talk about this, but I'm not. Ooh, that's a much less subtle hint. So, the podcast is called Revisionist History by Malcolm Gladwell, and the very first episode is the one I want to tell you about. Only listen to the one episode, eh? Fair enough. It's called The Lady Vanishes. And I'm gonna be paraphrasing here. So you didn't even listen to the whole episode then? Fair enough. But basically, it looked at a few cases in history where it seemed like a glass ceiling had been shattered, but then nothing changed, at least for a long time. Is your aim to talk about feminist issues until somebody believes you're female? Because it's not the glass ceiling that needs shattering, it's that massive Adam's apple. The main example is a female painter from a few hundred years ago who becomes extremely famous in her completely male-dominated field. You say male-dominated field, I hear something most women were shit at. She breaks the glass ceiling of painting. She proves that women can be amazing painters. No, she proved she was a good painter. If she's supposed to be this champion of female artists, why don't you know her name? But then, she fades into the background, and it's a long, long time before the art world opens up to more female painters. So, what we can take from that is there was a time when there were no good female painters. And then there was, all of a sudden. And then for a while, there wasn't again. Not to say that there wasn't any female painters, it's just they were shit. But then, I'm no historian. And neither are you. The other example was more recent, and it was about the Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard. Ah, see now we have a name for this one. Because if you can't find it on the first page of Google search, it's not worth knowing. Who, despite being the Prime Minister, had to face tons of sexism as a part of her job. Such as? Or are we just taking your word for it because, you know, she's a woman and so must be subject to sexism because that's what women do, isn't it? Face sexism for every hour of every day. And then the next prime minister was a man, and the one after that, and the one after that. So they found the right person for the job regardless of gender each time? How fucking sexist. How dare they not factor in genitals when it comes to running a country? Fucking savages. And Gladwell was trying to figure out why. Why were these women able to achieve such high-ranking positions in the art world or the political world or whatever if their fields clearly still weren't completely accepting of women? Because having a vagina doesn't automatically make you good at something. Besides having a vagina. And you are failing at that one, boy. The answer was called moral licensing. I had never heard this term before, and I'd always just called it the I have a black friend excuse. Do you think this bit's gonna be pretty racist? I think this bit's gonna be pretty racist. In that context, I'm sure you've heard it before. Someone says something pretty racist, then follows it up with, well, I can't be racist, I have a black friend. So you mean someone other than a black person is saying that? That isn't very inclusive, Riley. In fact, that's pretty racist. This can be used for pretty much any group. You can say anti-trans things and then claim it's okay because you have a trans friend. I wondered how long it would be until you brought up trans people. I'm starting to think you're addicted to it, mate. Started off as sexism, touched on racism, and now transphobia. You're ticking all the boxes, Riley. You can say misogynistic things. And back to sexism. We've gone full circle, people. And then claim it's okay because you have a sister. It's an excuse I've heard so many times. A better one would be, I can't be sexist, my mum is a woman. I mean, you badly need some humour in these videos, dude. Throw a pie for fuck's sake. But I never knew there was a term for it, and I definitely didn't know that it had been studied so extensively. Oh yeah, feminists will study anything extensively if it involves some kind of oppression. It doesn't even have to be real, but they'll still hand out degrees in it. Another way of thinking about it is that it's like if you were to give yourself a pat on the back for doing one progressive thing. Do you do that? I bet you do that. Oh, well done me. I've been so progressive today. Pat, pat, pat. And then you thought that excused you from being progressive in other areas. Like with the earlier example, the male painters were thinking, well, we can't be sexist. We had that one female painter. It does often amaze me how feminism gives its followers the ability to read minds. Not just that, but mines from hundreds of years ago. So they felt okay denying other female painters any opportunities in the art world. Yeah, okay, it was sexist back then. Especially by your standards, Riley. I mean, fuck, you would've shat a brick if you were alive then. But you can't apply the same reasoning to the present day. Women aren't excluded from professions because they're women. In fact, they're not excluded at all. 
May I remind you, Riley, that you and everyone else are free to become street cleaners if you wish, but I don't think you will, princess. Australia thought it had solved sexism when they elected Gillard, so they were able to excuse the terrible behaviour shown by Gillard's co-workers. Was that really the purpose of electing her, though? To solve sexism? Or was it because she was the best candidate? Australia is full of things that want to poison and or eat you. It is dangerous enough as it is without having a government that is ran by someone who was picked because of their junk. Another example in the podcast was a study done on people who voted for Obama, and it found that they were actually more likely to have racist opinions. Because in their minds, they voted for Obama, so they can't be racist. And so they think that gives them a license to actually be more racist. And what is a racist opinion, Riley? Because we have very different ideas on what racism actually is. For instance, for you, it is pretty much everything. And I think this can actually explain a good chunk of this election. Like, we know that there were people who voted for Obama in 2012 who now voted for Trump in 2016. And that only amazes you because you think voting for Trump is an act of racism. And I've heard that everywhere, but I have no idea how you came to that conclusion. Is there a website you go on where you're told what to think? And I think to most of us, we're shocked as to how they could do that. Surely someone who is progressive enough to vote for our first black president isn't bigoted enough to vote for Trump. Again, I'm not hearing what is actually bigoted about it, Riley. You're just saying it is. But I think the answer lies in moral licensing. No, I'd put it down to the other candidate being so fucking mental that Donald Trump actually seemed like a good idea. Because these people think that because they voted for Obama, they can't possibly be prejudiced and therefore they're able to rationalize voting for Trump without feeling bad about it. Nah, you're right, Riley. It couldn't possibly be anything to do with politics. I also think that helped people explain away their sexism towards Hillary Clinton. Sexism to what? If someone told Hillary Clinton to make them a sandwich, I will shake that person's hand, sir. Because whatever your opinions of her are, she faced a ton of sexism in this election from people all across the political spectrum. He actually said spectrum there, but you know Riley, he loves his jump cuts. And people felt okay doing that because they thought they couldn't possibly be sexist because they had supported Elizabeth Warren or Carly Fiorina or voted for a female governor or something like that. So you're saying sexism stems from voting for female politicians, in which case, stop voting for female politicians. Problem solved. Even people who are hugely anti-Semitic might not believe they're anti-Semitic because they have a Jewish author that they like or they went to the Holocaust Museum once or something. <laughs> So I guess you're in charge of who's what then, Riley. I can always trust you to let me know when I'm being a sexist, anti-Semitic racist. You always know best. I'm just glad there's a term for this so that we can talk about it and try to address it. Because I think the way to prevent this is to be aware of it. Always with the fucking awareness. Do you know why you can't actually do anything about these problems, Riley? You can only ever raise awareness about them because they don't fucking exist. If someone wants to be a cunt to someone else, they will do it, regardless of whoever they voted for. You have to know that you can do a progressive thing and still be racist or sexist or whatever. And if you do, good on you. That's multitasking and you are nailing it. Racism, sexism, or any kind of bigotry is not solved in a single act. Well, it's not solved at all, really, is it? I mean, it'll always be there. You can't control how people think, Riley, even though I know you'd love to. Thank fuck you're an idiot and you can't do any real damage. It's something that we actively fight against every day and we need to be aware of that. Why do you need to be aware of it if you are actively fighting it every day? It must be exhausting to be that much of a retard, Riley. You must be tired all the time. And just because you know one person from a specific group doesn't mean you get to make sweeping judgments about that entire group or speak on behalf of that group. But you've spent most of this video speaking on behalf of people. Fuck you, Riley. You are the human version of a headache. Thanks for watching, guys. And remember, you can be as sexist as you like as long as you're aware of it.